Hello world, welcome to another session with me, Varun. And in today's session, we would be looking at object-oriented ABAP. And this is the part two of the series. So welcome to another session with me, Varun on Tech Tablet. And in this session, we would be looking not only at how to understand object-oriented ABAP, but we would also be looking at some interview perspective, right? And prior to object-oriented ABAP, we have already completed the entire ABAP series. Uh, we have also started looking at the development paradigm of ABAP. You know, I'm just trying to post the entire ABAP course content for free. And we also have had the UI5 Fury course content and the UI5 Fury interview questions. So now this is the object oriented ABAP or OO ABAP part two. And if you have liked my videos, you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram on the IDs mentioned below. That is Barunrao underscore Gemini at yahoo.com. Right. And a bit about me, well, as you all know, I'm an ABAP UI5 Fury developer, and I have knowledge on HTML5, JavaScript, XML, CSS3, and I am currently on preliminary stages of understanding and learning IoT, AI, machine learning, deep learning. It could be for probably data science or Leonardo, right? So the agenda of this session would be to look at interview question and answers, followed by basic concepts of object-oriented programming and how do we answer in an interview so when we talk about this question uh, is it really required for a developer to learn object-oriented programming in today's generation well i wouldn't say no and i also wouldn't say that abap or object-oriented abap is dying as such well i think they're just evolving in newer forms and they're coming up like you know it, it, it's a loop you know coming up in newer phases with newer versions and newer technologies and newer techniques in it. So I don't think learning something would ever set you back or would ever pull you back out from the crowd. So you can always learn object-oriented ABAP at least to put it up in your resume, though you don't want to become an object-oriented, uh, you know, actual object-oriented developer, right? So that is another important perspective that you could probably think of when you want to learn object-oriented. So now let's begin. So we would be beginning with very basic genre questions and then we would you know, keep going heavy. So the first three parts would be focusing on fresher level or beginner level and then we would be going to mediocre and higher level as we keep going further. So what is polymorphism is the first question that we have. So polymorphism is basically a concept. It, it, it's, you know, it, it's something wherein the same method would have, uh, you know, the same, we would have different name and they would also behave differently in different classes. So it's just, it's like split personality of a human being. I, I, I'm not able to give you a better example of this. It's like the same person is behaving better here and when he goes to another place or when he goes to another room, he's a different person. So it's like this. So it's like each method will have its own implementation in different classes, but with the same name, right? So this is something that you've got to know. Next, explain friend class. So as you're, able to understand from the name itself a friend class is a class which can access the private components of another class now these private components are not accessible to all the classes so if you want to access a private class then you've got to use a you know friend class next what is an alias so an alias is basically another name so if you have a pet name like i don't know there are many people who have a lot of pet names right so alias is a pet name so instead of specifying the full name of an interface method we can assign it a name to directly trigger the event so this can be taken care of for example narendra modi is called as namo so namo is an alias you know you even have a lot of you know band uh, you know people of rock band like marshmallow marshmallow which is a band he does, i don't know what his name is but marshmallow is I'm, I'm sure definitely an alias of his original name you know there are a lot of alias that we can give so alias is basically understood as a nickname then can we declare events in an interface well yes that is totally possible in object oriented web app uh, how is encapsulation implemented well firstly before we get into what how it is implemented let us understand what encapsulation is so it basically means that the implementation of an object is hidden from the other components. So it's like in hide status. Now, why is this done? Or, you know, why do we do this? It's basically done to reduce the complexity of the screen for, the, for a user and also, you know, probably the functionality for a developer. So, so why do we do that? It is 
basically because the end user would not make assumptions about the internal status of an object and hence the dependencies on specific implementations would not arise so that is the reason why we use an encapsulation right the next one is what is a superclass and how is it implemented well a superclass is basically a generalization of its subclasses and the subclass is in turn a specialization of a superclass which basically a equal to b and b equal to a kind of a definition that we have here and how many classes do we have in object oriented well we have around six seven classes that is public class private final singleton abstract persistent and a friend class we've seen around three to four classes we would be looking at more classes as we go ahead and we would be looking at them in detail as we keep going further so uh, a singleton class would not allow you to use more than one class but a friend class is uh, something that we've just seen public class can be used and accessed by all private class can be used only by a few so see when you're answering about any of these questions in an interview the interviewer would definitely not bounce a very direct question on you asking you define object oriented about or uh, how would you like to uh, how do you see yourself after five years how would you define public class what is the difference between a function group and a class i mean the, the time is far by gone when questions of such simple genre were asked nowadays i'm sure you all must have experienced this in the market that if you are an abap developer with three years of experience they would expect that you know abap plus basics of object oriented now if you say that you are an abapper with five years of experience they expect that you know abap and you must be an expert of you know abap and object oriented and that you must also know another module you know like you know mm or hr or pp or or you know some other sd or some other connected module if you say that you have 10 years of experience they would expect that you know you know object oriented and you must be very good with idocs and you know uh, sd mm pp so they must be expecting that you must be a you know a, a puppet of all but master of abap kind of an employee so expectations keep building up so it's up to you to keep upgrading yourself according to time and technology because i'm sure most of you must already have experienced this in the market when you go to an interview you say three they have ex expectations of four and a half so it's, it's a never ending process and and they always want you to learn and upgrade so if any of you is in a confusion you know if it could be a fresher or it could be an experienced candidate so the more you learn the more you would have an edge over others a and b sometimes you know you might be pretty confident about an answer but then here you have two choices to answer in an interview the first choice would be to be honest and let the interviewer know that you do not know about it or b let us say that you have 40 percent idea of the answer so you construct the answer within the dimensionality of what you know and then you present rather than faking things or rather than trying to prove a point which you do not know which could only land you to trouble i think it is better that you you know express your views genuinely a and b you try to frame the answer within the compartment of what you know you don't have to show yourself or, or you know you don't have to unnecessarily try to prove a point and you know you don't have to display them of or you know you don't have to show them a picture of what you are actually not and land yourself into trouble the moment you are in an organization i mean this has happened to me a couple of times when i attended some interviews i tried to create uh, a, 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 you know a false image I, I, i'm sure this happens to 80 to 90 percent of the people we don't do it because we want to take a lot of responsibilities we do this because we want to crack the interview and in this process the interviewer also assumes that you must be having extraordinary knowledge because you are only answering around 10 or probably 20 now let us say you you have a bad luck you must be you know answering 30 so i don't think 25 to 30 questions define your technical knowledge so you must be or you might be able to fool the interview interviewer for a while but then please remember that in technologies the person who interviews you is the person whom you would be meeting on floor most of the times so you've got to be genuine and you've got to be honest right 
So keeping all these things in mind, let us go ahead. What is the difference between a function group and a class? So we've already seen this. You can create multiple instances of you know, the same class within one program, but multiple instances of a function group cannot be used. I'm sure you must all be knowing this. What is the difference between a singleton, a static class, in ABAP. So let's understand firstly what is a static component and a static class and then let us go on to understand the singleton class. So static components are basically uh, you know some are basically those set of components which exist globally. Like you don't have to create them or uh, the instance of these objects need not be created. You just have to access them using a selector. But when you talk about a static class, it's a class which you know only contains some or, or you know a set of static components and no instant component is referred to a static class now what is a singleton class it is a class which you know does not allow you to create multiple instances we have just seen that we have a lot of classes right in the previous questions you know public class final class singleton class persistent friend you know different classes so it's about these classes so we would be looking at all these classes in bits and pieces here and there so it would be up to you to connect all the dots and you know attend the interview so the tenth one and the final one in this series or, or in this video is what are the types of exception classes so we have two types of ex ex exception classes the first one being global and the second one being a local exception class right so uh, these are the questions that i have for you in this video in the upcoming video we will be looking at some more questions I would try to come up with some more uh, real-time technical questions, talking to some more consultants. If in case you've liked the video, hit the like button so that it would encourage us to do more and more. And if in case you feel that this might be useful for a fellow developer or for your own friend, share the video immediately because the motive is to at least a few people who are attending the interviews. And if there's any query that you have, please use the comment section below or if there's any value that you want to add to what I have made here, please write it in the comment section below as it might be useful at least for a few more who are preparing for some more interviews. So hoping that you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. This is me, Varun Rao, logging off, hoping to look, hoping to see you, hoping to you know, share more knowledge in the upcoming video. Have a great day ahead and all the best for the exam or for the interview that you're about to appear for.